Now we're going to talk now about some ideas for teaching reading, some activities specifically that you can use as a teacher in the classroom to reinforce students' beginning and developing understanding of phonics. The first of this is silent reading. Now it might sound simple, but this is actually a reading activity that's often overlooked by teachers, especially teachers of beginning learners. It can be very valuable, and if done right, it can be a productive time for learners. Basically, all you need to do with silent reading is tell students to read a certain amount, tell them how many pages or how many sentences you want them to read. Um, if they finish early, ask them to reread the material. Now, rereading is very valuable because it gives students more and more practice, and as they get more practice reading the same text, they become increasingly fluent and increasingly confident in reading that text. Also, this is when students are reading silently, this gives you an opportunity to come around, check in with students, monitor their performance. Um, and so when students are, a particular student is struggling, you can work one-on-one -on -one with that student. The thing about silent reading that is probably uh, the best thing about it is that it gives students a moment of time by themselves to read at their own pace. In a typical classroom, most of the reading that happens, happens at other people's pace. It happens at the teacher's pace, it happens at the other students reading aloud, it happens at their pace. This is the one opportunity when a student can sit down, read something, think it through on their own time. And I think that that can be a valuable experience. Choral reading, of course, many teachers are familiar with, uh, is where read a selection with your students. You can lead them and you can model good expressive reading with your students as you do that. Read, of course, at a moderate rate. Um, I would recommend before doing this, get students a chance to read silently by themselves. Again, just to practice and to feel comfortable with reading before they have to read with everyone else in the class. Uh, but hearing each other read, there's definitely a place for that, and it can be helpful. Individual turns, another method that's helpful for reading practice with beginning learners. The thing about in individual terms we have to be careful about is this idea of round-robin reading. Round-robin reading or reading around the classroom where we have number one, number two, number three, that can be a little bit dangerous. It can be dangerous because often when the first student's reading, the last student is sleeping or frantically trying to find their place in the book and figure out wh what number are you, where am I, what, page, what sentence, and then practicing their sentence. They're not listening to each other, they're not paying attention. It's, a lot of it is kind of not on task behavior. Now, probably the simplest way we can avoid that off-task behavior is giving, giving students the opportunity to practice. Letting them practice beforehand. Letting them feel comfortable. Maybe work in pairs beforehand. Read by themselves silently beforehand. When they have the chance to practice, they'll feel more confident and they'll, be, they'll look forward to demonstrating what they know. Um, so having the chance to practice and the other opportunity, the other thing to keep in mind is probably a popcorn approach. Rather than reading around the room, selecting students so all students know at any time I might have to read. When they have this in mind, that will keep people sharp, keep them engaged through the process. The other idea is, uh, is a teaching activity is close reading. Now, close reading is interesting because with close reading, the teacher reads the text aloud with the students, but when the teacher is reading along, the teacher will stop at a certain word, and then the students have to supply the missing word. So it's kind of like fill in the blanks, but with reading along with the teacher. Now, as they're doing that, as they're thinking about what the next word is, as they're filling in the blank, they have to use their predicting, they have to use their knowledge of words, they have to use all the reading skills they've been developing. And it also keeps them engaged as they're following along, wondering what word they're going to have to fill in. They're mentally engaging with the text. And that's valuable.
And the final activity I'll talk about in terms of reading development activities is partner reading. Partner reading is nice uh, because it gives students an opportunity to read in pairs. So rather than reading by themselves or reading with the whole group, which is typically uh, what happens in a reading classroom, they get a chance to read with an audience but without the kind of high stakes reading that they're reading if, they're, if they have to do it in front of the group. In this case, they get an audience, they get feedback, they get someone who can maybe uh, fill in a word that they don't know or can help them with a word that they don't know, can kind of scaffold each other through the reading process, but they can feel comfortable as they do it. However, at the same time, unlike a whole class activity, they can't just sit back and take a break and, and do nothing while five other students are reading. They have to be engaged with their partner. And that's a real benefit of partner reading. Now, we talked about some ideas, some methods for uh, encouraging reading and encouraging phonics development. I want to finish off with some specific ideas for what you can do in the classroom for teaching phonics. Now, these are some specific activity ideas. And the first one is giving word families and letting students fill in fill in lots of examples, come up with lots of examples. So if I were the teacher, I could say, OK, here's the at family. Think of as many words as you can that have an at in them. How many words? Fat, hat, bat, mat, cat. And the students can go around. They can do it in teams, get points, and think of lots and lots of words. And that's developing their knowledge of word families. The second one is I spy. So children can think about things in the classroom or things in the school or things in their bag that start with a letter. So if I say, OK, what's something in this room that starts with the letter B? And then the students have to guess, what am I thinking about in this room that starts with the letter B? And again, that's making more connections between the letter and the sound and things in their immediate experience. And for younger learners, these kind of concrete things in their experience are a lot more easy to grasp than more abstract concepts. Another example of an activity that can be helpful for teaching phonics is this idea of odd word out. Now, with odd word out, the teacher just has to give several examples of a word family and then change one of the words, and then the students have to identify which word doesn't belong. So in my example here, we have lunch, bunch, munch, and hatch. And then we can tell these words to the students, and they have to figure out which word doesn't belong. Again, as they do that, they're having to think about sound letter connections, and they're have to think, having to think about word families. Which word families go together, which words rhyme, which words don't rhyme. And this can be val valuable. Another idea is stretching words out. Now, you have to be careful on the kind of words you choose to do this activity. So for example, I can do it really easy with the word man. I can say, man. But if I try to do it with the word dad, it's not going to work as well, because I can't stretch that letter dad out. I just have to do it. So we have to think about the kind of letters. So maybe a f can work, or a v can work. But b, d, t. Those letters don't work as well. So again, though, when you're, especially initially when you're beginning to teach phonics to learners, stretching some of these sounds out can be really helpful for them to hear the difference in the various sounds in a word. Another idea is a concentration game. Now, concentration can be, be played a couple of ways. You could have students. Um, flip over cards to match the big letters of the alphabet with the small letters of the alphabet. Or you could have examples of words that start with a certain sound and they have to match over, you know, the picture of the B and match it, or the picture of the boy and match it with the letter B. And the picture of the cow, match it with the letter C. And so on and so forth. So concentration, various uh, Versions of concentration games can be engaging and helpful for making those sound letter connections. Another uh, interesting idea with a lot of potential that I think is overlooked is this approach uh, often called invented spelling. Now, invented spelling just means that learners are allowed 
as they're beginning to learn how to read, they're allowed to write and spell whatever way they think it sounds. So they don't have to use typical conventional spelling. They're not uh, pushed or forced to use conventional spelling initially. And the logic behind this is, even though they're not spelling the words perfectly, as they're writing the words, they're having to think about how what letter connects to the sound that is in my brain right now, that's in my mind. And so making those letter sound connections is important, not only for understanding phonics, but again for developing and refining their understanding of phonemic awareness. So that whole procedure, especially for tactile learners, learners who like to touch things, this whole procedure can be really helpful for them to make these sound letter connections. Ordinarily, we spend most of the time using our eyeballs and our brain, but this is one activity, well, any kind of writing is an activity that lets them use more than their eyeballs and their brain to make additional connections as they read. Another idea is uh, rhyming books. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about the value of rhymes. I think rhyming books can be very engaging. Students generally, children love wordplay. They love silly sounding words, strange sounding words. Even though they might not perfectly know what the word means, they often just like the sound of these strange words. Um, Dr. Seuss books are an example of books with engaging pictures, lots of strange, unusual words with unusual rhyming sounds and lots of wordplay that gets students to think and start thinking and paying attention to the similarities and the differences in the sounds of words in English. So books with rhymes can be helpful. Predictable books are another activity idea. Now you'll see in my example here, this predictable book, mom has a big box, mom has a big bag, mom has a big wig. We see that every one of these three sentences is almost the same except for one word. The good thing about that is it gives students a chance to read, read a full text with lots of repetition, but at the same time, some variation. And that's important, some variation, repetition with minor variation will keep students engaged and keep them willing to do the continued repetitious practice that they need to develop their fluency. So predictable books can be helpful. Uh, books, of course, with vivid pictures and pictures that help students guess what the words are, are also valuable. Uh, we see here a yellow door, a yellow cat, and then clear pictures of what these are. Learners come to realize that they can use the context, not just the letters on the page, to figure out what the meaning of the words are. And again, that's also a very valuable um, activity for helping them build their literacy skills. Another idea is bingo. Now, uh, funphonics.com has a bingo card maker that allows you as a teacher to go in, choose any words, three letter words, almost any words you can imagine, go in and you choose the words and they make the bingo card. And you can use a drop down menu, choose those words, and it'll give you nine, I think 12 and 15 uh, bingo cards that you can take into your classroom. Again, to practice rhyming, to practice common words, and thinking about those sounds of words and connecting them to other sounds, in other words, that sound similar and sound different. Another idea uh, was taken from one of the sessions uh, that I gave earlier. This came from a Korean teacher, and she said she's done this, and it's been very effective. Her students love it. I think it's a great activity because it's very versatile. Simply, the teacher makes, uh, takes A4 paper and puts the letter A, a big le letter A on that A4 paper, gets 25 other papers, puts each one a letter of the alphabet. So you have 24, 26 big papers with all the letters of the alphabet on them. You take those papers, you spread them around the room. You have two teams, one on one side, one on the other. Rock, scissors, paper, the winner, the teacher tells the students to spell a word, and then they have to walk around the room, jumping on the letters to spell the word. And as they do that, again, for learners who learn best with their bodies, kinesthetic learners, 
This kind of activity can be really helpful. And again, it's not just making the connections between sounds and letters with their eyeballs, it's making connections between sounds and letters with their whole body. And again, making that connection and thinking about how the letters and the sounds fit together. Walking phonics, this is called. Two final ideas. Uh, this one is another idea for sound letter connections. Students would line up at the back of the room. Teacher has the letters of the alphabet spread out on the whiteboard at the front. If you have two teams, the teacher says a letter and the student has to run, or teacher says a sound, and then the students have to come up, and the first one to grab the right letter that matches the sound gets the point. Similarly, you could do a similar game with uh, fly swatters, and in the case of fly swatters, the teacher has words on the board. The teacher says the word, the students have to come up and hit the word with the fly swatter, and whoever gets, hits the word gets a point. Now, I have a video I want to show, and in this video, we can see an example of a flashcard game. Number one, raise your hand. Number two, raise your hand. Number three, raise your hand. Number four, number five, number six. One more time, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Okay, as we saw in the video, uh, these activities with flashcards can be really helpful for teaching phonics and making the word, letter, sound connections as students do it rapidly to build their sight word recognition and their fluency ability uh, in a fast-paced, fun, and engaging way. Another idea for developing phonics and developing writing at the same time is apps. Now my experience with younger learners is that oftentimes getting them to write the letters is not as engaging or as exciting necessarily always, um, but if you give them access to an app that has them write the letters, they will do it again and again and again uh, as many times as necessary just for the sheer enjoyment of doing it. And as they make those letters, as they think about the sound and the letter connections, that helps build their phonics knowledge and their phonemic awareness knowledge. I'd just like to finish off with a little review of what are some of the key important factors to keep in mind for good phonics instruction. The first thing is, as we talked about at the beginning, it builds on and it begins with understanding of concepts about print how books work. It also builds on phonemic awareness. Students must begin with a knowledge that words are made of different sounds. And they're able to tease those sounds apart within a word. Phonics should also show clear sound letter relationships. So students can easily see that the letter connects to this particular sound in a clear way. Phonics should use invented spelling practice when students have the opportunity to write. Not only do they enjoy it and they become to see themselves as writers, which is an important uh, facet of literacy development, 
but at the same time, they're making and reinforcing those letter sound connections. Phonics instruction doesn't try to do too much. Research shows that there are actually over 500 rules of phonics. There's no way we can teach them all those rules, and we don't have to. All we need to do is teach them the basics, which is covered by the Chengdam April curriculum. This curriculum gives them a good, solid grounding that they can use in decoding texts and figuring out new words for themselves, and through reading, develop all the phonic knowledge that they'll need. And lastly, phonics gives chances for practice with real texts. As we saw with embedded phonics, it's important not just to do decontextualized phonics practice, but also to have the opportunity to read real literature and enjoy real books together. Through that, through reading and talking about real books and enjoying that, that will develop the love of literacy that we want to encourage in our learners. So thank you very much. My name is Dennis Murphy.